Good to be in the Lord's house this morning, and we appreciate all of you being here. And uh, it is good, it's been said already, good to have a good number of visitors with us. We want you to feel welcome in the Lord's house and not feel like a visitor. Uh, if you have your Bible this morning and you'd like to read with us, turn to the 22nd chapter of the book of Genesis. We're going to read just a few verses. This is familiar scripture to, to many of you. And uh, we trust that you'll pray for us for just a little while. Uh, I, I don't feel like I'm going to keep you a long time. I hope that uh, the Lord would let us say exactly what he wants us to say and nothing more. And that God would guard my mouth and my lips and keep me from saying anything he would not want me to say. Uh, we want to we wanna just bring to you the thought that God has laid on our heart. And there's several things in this that the Lord has dealt with my heart about and burdened me about as we try to look in it. As I was studying this and uh, praying about this, uh, it didn't really dawn on me that it would kind of tie in to last week's message and be along that same vein of thought. I thought God was leading us in a different direction, but... Uh, uh, it's going to be very similar to, and tie back into what we had preached last Sunday. And uh, we trust that uh, you'll pray for us. Beginning in Genesis chapter 22, I'm going to start in verse number 8. Uh, we're going to skip some of the background of the story and get down into the, the part that I feel like the Lord wants us to leave with you. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 8, the Bible says, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together, and they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand <coughs> and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. 
And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind, and behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And if we had a thought this morning, we'd like to preach and like to look at this name that's given in verse number 14 of this, of this passage, Jehovah Jireh. And if you have a study Bible or if you have a reference Bible, most all of them will have a comment on this verse that tells you uh, or will tell you the meaning or the name or, or the reference behind this name and they'll say something like this Jehovah Jireh means either the Lord will provide or the Lord will see and here we get that meaning from this verse uh, uh, where it says in the uh, uh, mount of the Lord it shall be seen and I want to uh, preach uh, for just a few minutes and last Sunday we preached on God saw and was satisfied uh, uh, and today I want to preach on this thought on the God who sees. Uh, uh, and I know it's along a similar line, but here we find in this passage of Scripture and, and its familiar story about Abraham carrying Isaac, his son, up on the top of the mountain to offer him as a sacrifice. Now this was his son Isaac, and he was going to carry him up as directed by God to offer him on this mountain. But I want us to look for just a few minutes uh, uh, at this name, Jehovah Jireh, uh, or Jehovah Jireh, uh, or J Jireh, if I'm pronouncing that right. And I may be mispronouncing it, to, uh, and I hope you'll forgive me for that. But I want to look at that for just a few minutes and look at some things in the Word of God uh, uh, that would give us some background on this God that we worship and serve. And I want you to know something this morning, uh, that God sees everything. God knows everything. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. And He's omnipresent. And I know <coughs> that it's very difficult for me to get my mind around things and to get uh, grasp it in my mind, uh, uh, the fact that God sees everything and God sees the beginning and the end at the same time, Brother Anthony, it's just hard for me to understand that, but I trust and believe that that's what God can do. And I know it was mentioned back in revival, I believe Brother Keith was preaching one night and he was talking about God seeing things and, and how God uh, uh, does not dwell in the same time that you and I dwell in. Now listen, I, I want to I clarify that and it'll uh, give us some background on our message here. But if you and I look at this pulpit in front of us, and you, and you started, I'm going to start over here because this will be on your uh, left hand side, but if, if, if this was the beginning of creation over here, and we read about the beginning of we read about creation in, in Genesis chapter number one. And if this is the Genesis chapter number one, and this period of time where we're living in right now is over here on your right hand side. Here it is, uh, August the 13th, 2023. And I could go on uh, to the end of the book of Genesis, but we're just going to that God sees that at the same time. God doesn't dwell in this space that you and I call time. God created time, and God sees all that. Uh, and you say, well, preacher, I just don't understand that. Well, welcome to the club. I don't either. Uh, but I believe that God sees everything. Uh, and way back over here in Genesis, God saw where we would be at today. And we ought to find some comfort in that because I can say this to you this morning. We've got several visitors here. We've got a lot of members here. God saw every one of you and knew you'd be in Mount Zion Church on August the 13th, 2023. Now, what well, just dawned on me saying August the 13th, that tomorrow's my spiritual birthday, amen? Uh, August the 14th be the uh, day that I got saved, and I'm thankful uh, for that. But 
you turn back with us into the uh, Genesis chapter number one and let's look at a few things and uh, some of you are going to say, well, preacher, you don't need to, to, to preach or uh, I'm going to do a little teaching this morning for a little while. And a lot of this I taught to the young adults in Sunday school or in Bible school and they got it, amen. So you might walk out and say, well, preacher, I didn't get it. I'm going to say, ask your children if they were in Sunday school, all right? Now you're going to get it because we're going to just look at a few things. The Bible in the book of Genesis, and I'm just laying some foundation and, and want to look at this the God who sees. And when we read in the book of Genesis chapter number 1, we read in verse number 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And verse number uh, 3 says, And God said, Let there be light. And verse number 4 it says, And God saw the light. In verse 5 it says, And God called the light day. Verse 6 says, and God said, let there be a firmament. And verse 7, and God made the firmament. And verse 8, and God called the firmament heaven. Now, I'm not reading all these verses. I'm reading what the beginning of them is. And I want you to see down through here, there's a pattern that is repeated. It's, and God said, and God called, and God uh, 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 called, and God saw, and God created and here in the book of Genesis chapter number 1, we find, uh, uh, listen, the, the, the word God here, the root word of that or the, the Hebrew word that's translated God for us in Genesis chapter number 1 is the Hebrew word Elohim, E-L-O-H-I-M. And it means God. It talks about a deity. But the word Elohim uh, uh, is the plural form of that word and I want you to understand this uh, you say well there's more than one God no there is one God but the Bible teaches us uh, uh, about three personalities God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit and they are one God and they are one in the same and it is revealed for us here in Genesis chapter 1 verse number 26 uh, uh, because it said and God said let us make man in our image. And so from the very outset in the book of Genesis, in the very uh, beginning of creation, we have recalled for us uh, uh, that there is a trinity uh, and the trinity is not necessarily taught in that uh, 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 that word uh, uh, but it is acknowledged and it leads uh, and leaves the door open for the later revelation that there's God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit and so the word Elohim or Elohim uh, uh, is translated for us down through here all through Genesis chapter number 1 where it says and God and so God but now let's look at Genesis chapter number 2 real quick the word Elohim means a, a, a God or deity. And let me say this before I read in Genesis chapter number 2. The, the, the word Elohim that's translated there for us, God, talks about it, has, it carries this connotation that it's a title or an office. And so God is God, okay? We might say today, uh, and I, 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 I'd be careful in saying this in the pulpit, but we might acknowledge who the President of the United States is, right? Pre and I don't want to say his name, okay? So President is his title, all right? And that is the office he's fulfilling. But here we have the uh, name or the word, let me say it like this, we have the title God, and we have the deity God in its plural holding that office or, or or occupying that office of God he is perfect and and we'll get into some of that in just a minute but but bear with me for just a second and then we come down to Genesis chapter number two verse number four and the Bible says this these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created now if any of if we've got any inclination of that that evolution was ever uh, a thought. God settled it when he pinned his word down right there, didn't he? These are the generations of the heaven and of the earth when they were created 
in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now you notice that this is the very first time in our Bible that we find the word Lord. And if you're looking at a King James Bible, and this is consistent throughout a King James Bible, and this is one of the reasons I am uh, adamant about my study of a King James Bible, uh, uh, is that the, the consistency in which uh, the translators made this happen. You see that the word there that is spelled out for us, L-O-R-D, is set forth in a particular typeset or typeface. It is all capital letters. Uh, now, they, they're printed in smaller form, but they're all capital. And so that, throughout the King James Bible, will always uh, be translated from the Hebrew name Jehovah. All right, so now listen. God is his title, and that is his office. His name is Jehovah. All right? And Jehovah uh, means the one who provides or the self-sufficient one. You come into the book of Exodus chapter number 3 uh, uh, where God speaks to Moses out of the burning bush and he says, I am that I am. I'm the one who exists. God exists without anything uh, uh, creating him. Uh, listen, uh, uh, and God is God. In, in the book of Psalms, turn with me if you've got your Bible open. Now, I'm, I'm just laying a little foundation. I'm going to get to the message in just a minute. Psalms chapter number 83, I want you to see this. Psalms chapter number 83 verse 18. Now unless you think I'm making this up about his name, we're going to go to the Bible. And I know y'all... Uh, I, I'm just saying that, but I don't want you to trust me only. I want you to trust what the Bible has to say. In Psalms 83, 18, it says that men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah. And notice that it's in all capital letters. So, uh, and it is translated from the Hebrew word Jehovah. Art the most high over all the earth. And so his name clearly spelled out in the Bible is Jehovah. His office is God, the supreme being, the creator, the one who spoke and put everything into existence. But his name is Jehovah. Uh, listen, he's our Lord, amen. Uh, uh, he's the one that we're serving and worshiping today. Uh, and, and, and listen to me, uh, uh, four different times you'll find the name Jehovah spelled out in your King James Bible. It is spelled alone uh, by itself four times Jehovah and then three times it's spelled uh, uh, in a combination form like we read for you in Genesis 22 where it is Jehovah Jireh. The other two are Jehovah Nissi, uh, uh, listen, and Jehovah uh, Shema. Uh, uh, and we might preach on those, or Jehovah Shalom. Uh, uh, we might preach on those in the coming weeks. I don't know where God's going with this. I don't know how God's leading, but thank God I don't have to see because John, he's the one who does see, amen. And he knows what we need. He knows exactly where we are. And he knows exactly what we need. Now let me uh, uh, bear with us for just a few minutes. Uh, uh, turn to the book of Ezra uh, in uh, your King James Bible. Uh, the book of Ezra has some particular things in it. Uh, uh, it's in about the middle of the Old Testament. And I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. So y'all bear with me. Ezra chapter number 5, verse number 1. Then, and I still hear pages turning, I'll pause just a minute. But Ezra chapter 5, verse number 1. Then the prophets, Haggai the prophet, and Zechariah the son of Iddo, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem, even the name of the God of Israel, even unto them. All right, turn over just a few pages to, to Ezra chapter 7, verse number 19. Ezra chapter 7, verse 19 says this, The vessels also 
that were given thee for the service of the house of God, those deliver thou before the God of Jerusalem. So you'll find in your Bible, you'll find a phrase like this every once in a while. You'll find him called the God of Israel. You'll find it, as we just read for you, the God of Jerusalem. You'll find him as called the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. But nowhere in your Bible do you ever read the Jehovah of Israel. Nowhere do you ever read the Jehovah of Jerusalem. Nowhere do you ever read the Jehovah of Jacob or the Jehovah of Isaac. Uh, and listen, uh, uh, listen, now this was a blessing. God was uh, uh, filling me last night and this morning and my heart was just filling up. Uh, uh, listen, uh, 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 because uh, uh, there is only one uh, Jehovah, amen. Uh, uh, there are many gods, right? Uh, uh, people are worshiping gods all over the world today. Uh, uh, but there is only one Jehovah. And if he said the Jehovah of Anthony, that would open the door up and might be a Jehovah of Donnie. Uh, uh, but there is only one Jehovah. Amen. And I don't know why. I did not know at the time why this was the case. Uh, I don't know why God wanted me to do it. God didn't let me know at the time. Uh, uh, but he did this morning. Amen. Uh, uh, in the bulletin for the month of August. Uh, I've never done this before. We hadn't shared anything like this. Uh, uh, but at the top of the second page, God impressed upon my heart to put this as a memory verse. Uh, uh, he said, put this memory verse in there. That's the, what the Holy Spirit was impressing on me. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verse number four says this, uh, uh, Hear, O Israel, uh, the Lord our God is one Lord. Is one Lord. Listen to me. Now if I use those names, I'm not trying to change the King James Bible, but I want you to bear with me for just a minute. He says, Hear, O Israel, Jehovah our Elohim is one Jehovah. There is one God, and His name is Jehovah. There may be other gods out here in the world. There may be other people worshiping, but I'm talking about the God who sees. Amen. Uh, and listen, uh, uh, the Bible teaches us uh, uh, about gods in the Bible, and it talks about the ones that are made with man's hands. Uh, and he says, they see not nor hear, amen, uh, uh, but my Bible tells me uh, uh, in the book of Psalms chapter, uh, the book of Psalms chapter number eight, I believe it is verse number one, uh, uh, that God that made the eye can see and God that made the ear can hear, amen. Now I'm talking about the God who sees, Jehovah Jireh, or Jehovah Jireh. Listen, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you may find in studying your Bible and you may find in reading things and you may even hear this uh, and you may even hear a preacher, uh, uh, listen, uh, say some things like this. Uh, uh, but I want to tell you something this morning and it was not that way. Uh, uh, you, might have, uh, you might hear somebody intimate one time uh, uh, that the world worshiped many gods and then the Lord revealed himself as one God. But that's not true. In the book of Genesis where I read for you. There was God the Father. There was the Elohim. God the plural. One God. But then in chapter number 2 as I already read. There was one Lord. The Lord God. Let me say this to you this morning. In creation God revealed himself to Adam and Eve as one God. It has been through time uh, and in our, uh, uh, in our society that has uh, stooped into sin that has brought out the uh, implication or the thought, the idea that there might be multiple gods, amen. It wasn't that way from the beginning uh, uh, because in Genesis God saw a need, amen, uh, and God saw, uh, 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 God saw it all uh, and he put man in the Garden of Eden, amen, uh, to dress the garden and to keep it and God saw all this happening and he revealed himself uh, uh, as the Lord God uh, to Adam and Eve, amen. The one God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Don't think they're three different gods. They're one God. 
There are three personalities. Uh, uh, God uh, 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 the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us in John chapter 1, verse number 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him, and without anything, without Him, uh, uh, n- nothing exists or consists. Amen. Uh, all things were made by Him. He was there. God the Son was there in creation. And I'm trying to preach on the God that sees, the God that provides. Now let me go back to my text. I'm not going to be long. I'm going to close in just a minute. But I want you to get something out of this that's going to be a help to you. I want you to get something out of this that God is going to uh, bless your heart with uh, and bless my heart with. Uh, uh, Listen, because here we find in uh, the story of Abraham carrying his son Isaac up onto a mountain to pray. And God had already told uh, uh, Abraham, he said, I want you to offer your son Isaac for a sacrifice, a burnt offering unto me on the top of this mountain. And you and I just can't imagine that. We can't comprehend that. Uh, uh, God didn't want Isaac for a burnt offering. God never wanted Isaac for a burnt offering. What God wanted was faith and obedience from Abraham. Amen. Amen. Because Abraham's walking up the mountain and Isaac, his son's there with him and he's uh, probably in his teenage years. We don't know exactly, maybe 15, 17 years old, something like that. Uh, uh, Listen, uh, and God uh, uh, reveals to Abraham, or God reveals to Isaac that something's missing. They've got fire, they've got wood, they've got a knife. Evidently, they had been on an excursion like this before and Isaac knew they needed a lamb, Lamar. Because he turned to his father Isaac and said, where's the lamb? And Isaac, where I read for you, or or Abraham speaks to Isaac where we started out in in Genesis Genesis 22 verse 8. He said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb. Now don't ever misread that verse. It does not say God will provide for himself a lamb. It says God will provide himself a lamb. Knowing that the God who sees, Brother Donnie, was going to have a sacrifice of his own son. God will provide himself a lamb. And the word translated right there, provide, is the same word that's translated for us, gyra, or or see, in verse number 14. And so provision or providing requires that the person sees a need. You think about this, if you're going to make provisions for a journey, you've got to look ahead and realize that there's something you're going to need, amen. And God looked ahead in time and saw that there was going to be a need and God made provision. In in Abraham's day, it was a ram caught in a thicket. But in our day, amen, right now, it is Jesus Christ that God saw our need, amen. And God provided for our need. Now, Abraham wasn't saved by that ram caught in the thicket. He was saved by faith. And he just realized that that ram was going to be a type of what God would do. But he said, God will provide himself a lamb. And in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. So I want you to understand something this morning. God sees. In In the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 18, you don't have to turn there. Here's the story in 1 Kings chapter 18. You got the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And, God, and, and Elijah says to, to Israel and to Ahab, he said, If Baal be God, then follow him, or if the Lord be God. All right? They were going to make a choice between the Lord, Jehovah, and Baal. Now, they were both seen as gods, right? They were both being worshipped. But Jehovah is going to be the one that saw and heard, amen. Uh, uh, Because you remember Elijah speaking out after they had sacrificed or after they would cried and cut themselves. Uh, uh, Listen, you might say, well, God doesn't get petty. Every once in a while, God just reveals how little we are, doesn't he? He looked at the prophets of Baal and he said, Elijah, why don't you just speak to them and say, maybe he's on a journey. Maybe he's asleep. Amen. Sometimes God just wants us to realize that he's the one that sees it all to start with. 
And God saw what was going to happen. You might say, well, preacher, you're chasing a lot of rabbits. I'm still preaching about the God who sees, amen. I'm, I'm still wanting you to understand uh, this morning, and I'm trying to get the message across that God sees and God provides. I could call, I, I could start this morning. I could name need after need after need in Mount Zion Church. I could tell you people we need to be in the altar praying for. God knows what mountain they're climbing. God knows what trial they're going through. God knows what you're going through. God knows what I'm going through, amen. And God knew all that before he put that need and that burden and that mountain on us, amen. And God provided what we need in that trial. And listen, he's provided for us this morning. You might be here and you might be lost. You might not have ever been saved. You may not have ever called out and asked Christ to save you. He's provided for that need. He's made it possible for you to come and get saved. He's made it possible for you to be born again and know that heaven can be your home. Uh, uh, listen, and when you pillow your head tonight, uh, uh, I hope you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are saved. I hope you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God saw your need as you sit in Mount Zion Church this morning and you say, Preacher, I want to get saved. Well, God provided, amen. God saw ahead in time to let you know that he would provide for you a sacrifice. He would save your soul. He would pay your sins debt. God sees and God provides. I thought about this. When, when Samuel, when Samuel, in the book of 1 Kings, I'm sorry, in the book of 1 Samuel. When Samuel was mourning over King Saul, Saul had sinned and, and God told Samuel, said, don't, don't mourn for him, don't weep for him. Saul had sinned and it broke Samuel's heart. And you know what God told Samuel to do? He told him to take Brother Jack a horn of oil and go to the house of Jesse, but the Bethlehemite, and what did he say? He said, I've provided me a king of his sons. You know what God was telling him? In, in Jesse's kings, I see, my, I see a king. In Jesse's sons, I see a king. God was letting them know, Samuel, you go over to the house of Jesse because down there I see a king. Amen. What's God see this morning in your life? What does God see this morning in your need? What does God see this morning in the mountain that you're going to climb? Or maybe you're climbing right now. But God sees and God provides. Uh, and listen, uh, God, uh, uh, Je uh, Samuel didn't see. Uh, uh, what did Samuel do? What did Samuel do when he got over there? Boy, I didn't know God was going this way. David's oldest brother, Jesse's oldest son came out there. And, David, uh, and Samuel said, this is the one. And what did God tell Samuel? I'm not looking at the heart. I'm not looking at the size of him. I'm not looking at his stature. This isn't him. And the next one come out and said, I'm not looking at uh, how well he looks. I'm not looking at uh, everything that the physical can provide. This is not him. And finally they all passed by. And God said, this is not them. And Samuel said, have you any more sons? Is there anybody else? And Jesse said, there's the youngest over there uh, taking care of the sheep. And Jesse uh, uh, said, there he is. He's not with us. He's over there. And Samuel said, go get him. I'm not sitting down till he comes. And when he shows up, God said, that's the one. That's the one I saw. You anoint David to be my king. And God let, uh, uh, and listen, God was setting some things and Jack was teaching it in Sunday school this morning. God can see, amen, what's going to happen before it happens. And God knows our needs this morning. God is the God who sees. Now you can worship. I thought about this. Lamar, you got a song, don't you? All right. In the book of Acts, I mentioned this last week. He says, for as much then as we are his offspring, that we ought not think that the Godhead is like, uh, likened to gold or silver or stone. 
I could go out in the parking lot and I could get a rock and I could bring it here and we could set it up on the pulpit or we could sit it right here on the, the table. We could sit a rock right there. We could all sit down and watch that rock. And we could wait on that rock to do something. Amen. We, I, I could take a book. Some people worship books. And we're going to sit down. We're going to wait on that book to do something. We can sit here all day. We can sit here all night. And we can wait on that book to do something. And it's never going to do anything. But we can turn our attention to the God of all glory, amen, who has already done everything. He's Jehovah, amen. He is the one to be worshipped. He is the one to be praised. Uh, he is the God who sees and He hears and He provides for us, amen. He is our Jehovah Jireh this morning. He is the God that sees. He is the God that provides and listen, I want you to know something this morning. He's only one. De Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 4 has got a special place for the nation of Israel. And I'm not going to get into all that. I've preached on it before. But I want you to memorize that. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. We're worshiping the God who sees and provides this morning. Are you worshiping Him? Do you praise Him today? I'm talking about the God who sees. I'm talking about the God who moves in the midnight hour. I'm talking about the God who stirs in your heart. This is just a bulletin. and uh, Listen, I'm just putting it up because the memory verse is in there and I want you to study it. I want you, but I'm talking about, I, they were singing that song. Uh, the boys were leading that song. Just a little talk with Jesus. Have you ever felt the need to pray? I'm talking about really felt the need to pray. I don't like to use a whole lot of personal references. I, I really don't, I'm not, because I'm not trying to brag on me. I, there's nothing about me that's bragging, but, but they've been several mornings since I started back to school. I pull in the parking lot on the way. I pull in this parking lot, park right over there where I normally park and just have prayer before I ever got to school. Just because I wanted to pray. Just because there's a little fire burning. Now that's the God that sees. That book, if I was worshiping that book, he ain't going to make me want to pray. But Brother Donnie, God had stirred in my heart about stopping and praying. Uh, I guess it was Wednesday or Thursday morning. I'd come through the roundabout. And God stirred in my heart about praying, and something happened between there and the driveway. You know how your mind gets? And, and, and it was gone. I had no thought about stopping to pray. I thought about it about the time I got to Lamar and Wanda's driveway. And I thought, well, I can turn around and go back. And God just said, Shoal Creek's got a parking lot. So I whirled into Shoal Creek. I had prayer in Shoal Creek. You thought, I don't care what they thought, amen. Listen, I'm talking about the God who sees, realized that I could go down the road and still meet him in prayer, amen. He's got our needs taken care of before we know we need it, amen. He's the God who needs. He's the God or the God who sees and the God who provides. You study that name out, Jehovah Jireh. The God who sees and provides. Now I'm asking you this morning, do you have a need that He can meet and provide for? It might be the need of salvation. It might be the need of deliverance. It might be the need uh, of just comfort and peace. In your heart. Whatever it is, I'm telling you this morning, God sees and God can provide. Let's stand all over the house. I don't know anybody's heart. I don't know anybody's needs. I don't know anybody's wants. But I do know the God that can meet them. Amen. As we stand and sing, Lamar, what's your number?